If your ring finger is longer than your index finger, you have been exposed to high levels of testosterone as a fetus that is between weeks 10 to 15 after fertilization. Testosterone is needed for penile growth at several points in time in male development. So there is a positive correlation between fetal testosterone, digit ratio and penile size in adult life. I did a separate video on this topic and received a lot of negative feedback. At the same time, only 9% of all viewers watched the important part of the video where I explain the meaning of statistical correlations. I even received comments questioning the credibility of the whole channel because people were not watching the video until the end. So here's a video about medical statistics and correlations in particular. Why should you care? Because medicine, biology, physiology, all that life science stuff is enormously complex. Don't be naive and expect black or white either or answers. You are easily fooled if you believe that a simple life hack in the convenience of your own home that you do only once will do something miraculous to your body. You are easy prey for misinformation like flinging back and forth your penis will make it larger or drinking water, eating watermelon and sleeping eight hours a day will restore your erectile function. These are only some examples of what I have seen on YouTube lately. Back to digit ratio. A mutual relationship between two or more things is called a correlation. The higher fetal testosterone rises, the longer the ring finger becomes, the longer the penis will eventually be. That's a correlation and it's a scientifically proven fact. I didn't make that up. However, correlations almost never mean that it is always that way. So if you look at your hands and your penis and you think your penis is small despite a male pattern digit ratio, it doesn't mean that the correlation is wrong. There are other factors that determine the size of your penis. Most of all, it is in your genes. If your genetic code says that you are bound to have a small penis, you can have all the fetal testosterone in the world and it wouldn't give you a large penis. But if fetal testosterone was low, chances are that your small penis could turn out even smaller because it didn't have the chance to grow to its full genetic potential. Statistical correlations always have to be looked at large scale. Only then it becomes visible because there are always outliers. In this case, men with a female pattern digit ratio and large penises or men with a male pattern digit ratio and small penises. But looking at a large cohort of men, the relationship between digit ratio and penile size will become obvious. Okay, that was correlations 101. Correlations 201 is that you have to be careful what to correlate. Because if you have a bunch of data and you run it through the computer, it may calculate a correlation between two variables that look good mathematically, but that doesn't make any sense. Let me give you an easy example. Every year in springtime, the storks return to Germany. More babies are born in the spring than during the rest of the year. At least it used to be that way. So it would be logical to think that the stork brings the babies because there is a correlation between the appearance of storks and babies during spring. In medical statistics, it is not always that obvious. This is why reading scientific papers is difficult because you need a lot of background information about the subject and medical statistics and a lot of experience because then you will be able to spot typical statistical problems more easily. About 10 years back, I went to one of the major urological congresses. I think it must have been the AUA 2010 in San Francisco. At a medical congress, people present their research in different formats. One of those formats is a poster session. You print your research on a poster, pin it to a board in a designated area, and then you wait for people to drop by to read what you have accomplished and to ask you questions. 
I remember I was looking at a poster from England and it had to do with comparing two kinds of antibiotics and the outcome was impressive. So I said to the guy something like, great research, impressive results. And he answered, yeah, but do you believe it? The fact that I remember his answer up until today shows that it meant a lot to me because it contained an important lesson about research and science. The lesson goes like this. Stay thoughtful. Not because someone deliberately tries to screw you over with this research, but because things can get very complicated, especially with statistics. There may be hidden statistical traps and effects which can make the interpretation of science very tricky. The overwhelming majority of scientists are honest people. They are not cheating with their results. But every study has its downsides. It can be anything. Maybe it's something they didn't think of when they designed the study. Maybe it's the study subjects who disregard the study protocol. Like in the PLCO trial, where men from the control arm of the study went for a PSA test, thus contaminating the whole study. So it would be wrong to just cite the study as a scientific example that PSA testing is useless without appreciating the fact that contamination messed up the results. The world is not either or. It is not black or white. And this is especially true for the life sciences. Hope that clears up things for you a bit. Here's a video about genetics and penile size. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.